for this week's political spotlight. So joining me to shine a light is Reform UK London mayoral candidate Howard Cox, as well as driving instructor Heather Watt and campaigner Claire Dyer. Right, so um, talk to me about what happened then. So I'll start with you, Howard. You're in the middle of these two beauties. These beautiful I am. Beautiful ladies. <laughs> so nice of you to join me. Now, the reason why I wanted to talk about this was because Sadiq Khan has got these ULIS cameras that have proved to be very unpopular. In fact, the majority of those in London voted against having them in there on the right. outer part of London. He's, ha he's had them installed, and in doing that, we've obviously got this, this, this team of people, they're called the Blade Runners, um, <laughs> ankle grinding or whatever, knocking down these cameras at force. So Sadiq Khan has put some sort of protections in place to stop this from happening. So, can you take it from there, Howard? What, 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 what's happening? OK, well, I can't condone the Blade Runners. That would be wrong to me for no, to do that. No, but nobody's condoning <coughs> This is part but, of why. Well, what's happened now is, of course, uh, because this, this, a lot of the cameras have been knocked down, they've decided to resort to using cameras on the backs of vans. Mm. And what's happening now is that uh, because they're also being blocked, peacefully blocked, and this is what my two colleagues here sitting here uh, were actually protesting about in front of vans, mm. What's happening now is that um, these... Well, it's so disrespectful to Khan, he's actually employed thugs, security thugs, who are not recognisable, etc., to protect these well, vans. When you, when you say thugs, how do you know that they're thugs? Well, when you say they're not recognisable, in what way? Well, a lot of them have balaclavas on, a lot of them do not have recognisable security uh, identification tags, uh, uh, and th these guys will tell you much more in a minute about the detail of all of this. But I was alerted to this, but right across London, a good eight or nine incidences where these security guys are actually... Fundamentally, are breaking the law. They are actually using their uh, alleged powers of, in, in terms of protecting these vans to actually threaten people and abuse people. Well, well Sadiq Khan would say that what he's doing is protecting property, which is obviously within his jurisdiction as, as London Mayor, and he has right to do that because uh, over a 1,000 of his cameras have so far been taken down by these Blade Runners, so surely he's within his rights to, to protect them. But he's not going for the Blade Runners. He's going for genuine, peaceful protesters around the vans <sighs> who are just saying, no, we do, not we do not want this. As you rightly reported, two out of three people objected to you, Les. And these are people continue this protest peacefully and lawfully. Well, 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 Heather, talk to me about what happened to you then. Well, uh, the, where I was hit was at the end of my road. So we were saw on Facebook or whatever the fact that there was going to be a, a camera van at the end of the road. My husband and I went up there. We are peacefully protesting, if you like. Mm. We do not touch their vans. We've got a big sign that we hold up in front of the camera, which we're legally allowed to do, peacefully protest. Um, and that's what we were doing there. Basically, some other hooligan, whoever it may have been, came and sprayed their van, and incidentally my husband's car, with some foam or another, which the security people then decided to call the police and their security van, or their car, should I say, because there's always a two or three, well, at least two cars round the corner with more security guards in it. So the security guards ar uh, arrived. Um, one of them, apparently, I didn't see it, but pushed one of the other protesters that had just arrived, accused him of spraying the car. It wasn't him. Don't know who it was. And there was a little bit of a, a to-do, if you like. Nothing violent, um, as in there was no punching or kicking or anything like that, but this guy got pushed, so he was a bit loud. The van decided it wanted to go without waiting for the police. I was asked, because they know that I'm quiet and reasonable, mm. I was asked by one of the security guards that was in the actual van itself if I could help them leave. And I said, I'm not going to help you leave. I'm not going to stop you. So with that, I walked to the rear of the van, which then put me between the van and the security guard, a uh, security car. Oh, God, no. The van has gone. Um, the security guard, the passenger, got into the car. And you can clearly see on the, the video, I'm just meandering at the back of the, the van mm. or in front of the car at that point, um, not really paying a lot of attention. The security guard's got into the car and he's gone like that to the driver. I could see that through the windscreen. And he just drove at me. Oh! Um, 
I've hobbled oh, away because he really hurt so he me. He hit you, so he, he hit like, me. Well, it, you were, and there was a car behind you that was stationary. Is that what you're saying? So you were in between two cars. No, the van oh, had gone. So the van had gone. And the car, <laughs> the security car, is the one that actually hit me. Um, it then pushed me, as in it hit me and knocked me off my feet onto the bonnet of the car. Oh my gosh! I've then hobbled away. <gasps> And I think it happened so quickly, but I think I got hit a second time, which no. then knocked me to the side of the road yeah. on the floor. Look at Claire, you, you saw all this, so is yes. she right? Was that, was yeah, that is. So yes. What, what, what did you What see? actually also happened before was, so I do know and I heard, um, they, were, they had called the police because of this incident. They were waiting for the police and then they were given an order from their team leader, whoever that is, to Foxtrot Oscar. That's the order. That's what was said. I heard that said. With that, it became very erratic. The security, there were six security to Heather, her husband, another very quiet man, and then obviously this other guy. Mm. And they became very erratic trying to get this fan out. And it did actually sort of side knock somebody as it drove off, which is how most people kind of ended up in the road. Like I said, that's how Heather was already between the two vehicles. And then the other security got in the passenger car. I said, you can't let them go, because there are some security that we do know and we get on with. Mm. So there was two out of the six that we do know and are amenable and we get on fine with them. And I said, you can't let them leave. I said, because they've just knocked somebody. Yeah. But then all they cared about was getting the support car, which isn't very well marked. It just has like a maintenance um, kind of sticker strip across the back of it and just a plain yellow strip down the side. Um, they're Peugeots. And um, yes, he, he essentially got in the passenger car and was waving him on. And as Heather said, yes, she was hit a second time. She couldn't get out of the way. Oh. And as she was trying to walk away, that's when they did actually just drive off and knocked her to the ground on the side of the road. Um, and then I essentially did chase after them because there was no intentions of them stopping. So I followed them and got them stopped some five, six miles down the road where the police intercepted them. As, uh, absolutely. You can, see, you can see why I call them thugs. We'll, we'll, we'll look. We'll, I can we'll... talk a lot about that. <laughs> now, I want to show you, so just a warning from home, uh, if you're watching at home, that some of the um, images you might see might be quite distressing, but I wanted to show you um, what happened to, to Heather's leg so you can see the damage. This is one of the bruises. Uh, if you're listening on the radio, Heather's got a big, almost like a blood shot kind of patch mm. all around the side of her knee. And then all around, this is, is this the other leg? No, it's this the same the leg. Same leg on the, on the outside of the same leg. A bruise that's almost like a line going all the way down. And then her foot also, another bruise Swollen. on the side of her foot, a very swollen leg as well. Um, she's obviously, she's got a crutch on the side there, but that, she's got one big, almost like a blistered bruise mm. just, just below the skin surface. It's like a real kind of maroon red. And so you can imagine the pain that that must have been. I mean, that's quite a serious I'm injury. still in an awful lot of pain now, 13 days later. This is only two weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks tomorrow. But the thing is, whenever it's been reported in the papers or anything else, uh, TfL's response to the reporters has always been there was no serious injuries. <laughs> um, nobody from TfL or anybody else has contacted me and I'm having to chase the police investigation unit to actually get them to investigate. Uh, anybody else would have been arrested straight away mm. and taken to the police station, whatever else. They spoke to the men at the side of the road when they eventually caught them after leaving the scene of an accident, um, and they were let, let go. I have no idea who to claim from. I have nobody's name, I have nobody's address, I have nobody's insurance details. Um, and I've lost work, and I won't be working next week either. Legally, I can't stop crutches. Yeah, well, listen, we're, just, we're having a situation with your microphone at the moment. We'll come and sort that out. But, Claire, you saw all of this. Um, what have you done as a result? Because I know you apparently chased... Did you chased the driver? Well, I traced both of them, yeah. Them. I managed to get the reg of the van, which we didn't have at that time, um, and got them stopped and stood in front of the van and, and they tried to drive into me. The Trump van was trying to move forward, budging me onto a roundabout with me standing in front whilst on the phone to the police saying, you're not going anywhere because you've just run someone over. What I was concerned about was, I think if this was a, a different incident with just everyday people, 
it would be handled differently. I just felt that based on the fact that they change vehicles all the time, you don't have the same drivers and the same security to the same vehicle, that once that vehicle got on the M25, we would have a much harder job trying to pinpoint who was actually driving that vehicle because I believe it would be covered. Yeah. But this, this is part of a much wider issue. You know, I wouldn't say we're protesters as such. What we all are collectively, you know, it has to be said that these camera vans are actually coming into the boroughs that opposed you, Les, in the first place, and they're suburban areas. So where we are, we're surrounded by countryside, fields and valleys. And we don't have trains and we don't have trams and we don't have very good public transport. So we already have a proportion of people, especially elderly, whose cars were not compliant, cannot afford to buy a new car, and are now essentially stuck at home. So what we are, are a collective of residents who care about the people in our community. And this is the same where the, the if you want to call us fan blockers, but, but you're not doing a just stop oil. No, uh, we're not exactly in that way. You're no. simply yeah. making a, an orderly protest, just like the yes. pro-Palestinian protesters and who I think I hate marches, but hey, right. hey ho. You know. so, so we have actually a good relationship with the police because police do come out, and they, you know we have a very good relationship with them. It's amicable. There's no, They're there's quite no sympathetic issues. As well. Very sympathetic, so, and we so, said so as long as we don't touch the vans, which we don't. If somebody did spray some paint on them, which we can't. Initially we, made them angry. Yeah. Yeah, so that's 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 the problem. Is that somebody did do something that was irritating? How do you got about twenty seconds? Um, what's 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 next for this then? Well, we've got to actually get to the bottom of this. So who did this for a start? But we also want to get to the bottom of the bigger picture. Who authorises this? Mm -hmm. These are, this is taxpayers' money being used to actually orchestrate a. a and I'm sorry, I'm going to say this: thugs to actually hit. Innocent people. Well, obviously, he didn't do it on purpose, I'm sure. No, he this, did do it on purpose. No, but you don't know. But listen, this is what the spokesperson for the Mayor of London says. Any injury is, of course, a serious matter, and the Met and TfL are investigating the circumstances of this incident. <sighs> Meanwhile, the Metropolitan Police say police are investigating the circumstances of an allegation of criminal damage and a road traffic collision in Biggin Hill. A further call was received stating a woman has been injured after being in collision with a vehicle and it attempted to leave the scene. She was not seriously hurt. All parties involved were spoken to and the investigation to police remains ongoing. Well, she said they haven't spoken to her, so perhaps they should. Uh, thank you very much, Heather, Claire and Howard, for joining